In this video, we're going to go over some of the common issues that come along with correlation because it's while it's used frequently, there is has a lot of issues statistically that come along with it. So, correlation is a very useful descriptive statistic and inferential statistic, but it has many limitations. First and foremost, it cannot be used to measure differences or causality. Remember, that can only come from a true experimental research design where you have total randomization, you have manipulation, um, and control. Correlation only measures relationships or associations, and the researcher is not going to control any other influencing or confounding factors. So again, researcher does not manipulate, researcher does not control like you would find in your experimental designs. As a result, correlation cannot imply causality. So here, as we can see in this visual, we have two different variables. And in those two different variables, we would have maybe up here we have x and then here we have y. It could be that x causes y. It could be that y causes x or because correlation only looks at relationships between x and y, we don't know if some other z variable that or we haven't measured yet has come in and can replace that factor. So we have to consider that the relationship is actually being ca caused by some form of outside factor. A common example you'll see in textbooks is the relationship between math content knowledge and shoe size amongst uh, middle school age and you know, elementary school age children. Well, there would be a correlation as those children's feet get better, they know more math. Well, but is it really the feet that are, in, are causing that or is it some outside factor like they're getting older and therefore they're also taking more math classes and they're going to know more about math in 7th grade than they do per se in 2nd grade when they have smaller feet. So we cannot imply cause and effect. The next relation, or the next part we've talked about a few times, but I just want to highlight the point is that correlation can only measure linear relationships. A zero correlation does not indicate no relationship because it cannot rule out a curvilinear relationship. It only rules out a linear relationship. Related to this is that you can have outlying scores are going to potentially increase or decrease values. Outliers are a big factor here, and only one outlier can really affect or influence your outcomes. Visually, this is a lot easier to see in pictures. So if you look in this picture on the left, we have a correlation of 0 .60. That is a strong or a strong moderate to strong positive relationship over here. But you notice we have this one outlier, and if you looked in here, this doesn't look like there's much relationship at all. If we remove that one outlier and take it out, now we look over to the right, look at the way that that relationship is actually coming out. It's actually a very negative, weak relationship. Same thing can happen in the opposite direction, where here we have one outlier that's pulling our relationship down so that we have a weak positive relationship. As soon as we remove that outlier, now the relationship goes to a strong positive relationship. So the outlier doesn't necessarily increase or decrease the relationship, it just can, but it can strongly influence or pull the relationship in a different direction. Notice what, um, which is that first point. So why does it drop so substantially? Well, if the trend were true that the outlier implies, we would see a curvilinear relationship, which are calculated as no relationship because a correlation coefficient can only assess a linear relationship. So what's happening is that outlier is starting to create, excuse me, let me bring up the drawing, is starting to create what the computer thinks is a curvilinear relationship without or without the dots around here and that's what's pulling the value down so much a related but slightly different issue is what we call divergent groups so in this case some form of subgrouping is occurring within your samples 
It's influencing either your X or Y predictor criterion variables. As a result, there's a mean difference that might be influencing the relationship between X and Y. So the question is whether or not the same relationship exists between the two subgroups. Again, a picture is helpful. So here I have a relationship between the amount of stress as our predictor and I have salary in dollars, and this is a very sexist example, but we have uh, males making more money than females. And we see the male grouping up here, and we have the female grouping up th or down there. It would be a problem if we didn't actually check to see if males and females have the same relationship together, because if we looked at this data separately and chopped it up, this or that relationship might be different than that relationship. But if we throw all the data into one study, the correlation might not truly be presenting our data. So what do we do about here? And like, I, or we want to determine if a pres or mean difference exists between the presence of males and females. So if the researcher thinks divergent groups exist. They should run a t-test, which we'll talk about in our next class, and determine if the groups differ significantly on either variable. If there is a significant difference, then the researcher should calculate two separate cal or correlations. So instead, the correlations would look like this, where we have a correlation for females on the left and correlations for males on the right. The final uh, the final limitation I'm going to discuss is got two names. One of the names is called homogeneity of the group. This is also, also sometimes called restricted range. Homogeneity of the group, if you think about the prefix of homo, means similar. So basically the saying is the group is very, very similar. Or restricted range, you're going to see on either the x value or the y value a lot of similarity between your x and y variables. If you limit the range of one of those variables, the correlation is going to be influenced, and typically it's going to be lowered. You can only, the thing is with correlation, you can only extrapolate to the data that you have within your range, so you can't expand out. Again, visually this makes a lot more sense. So here I have a pretty small range that I'm working here with age and performance, where my variables are only within this small box, and I can't extrapolate out across here or up there. However, once I start to move and add more information across the x and y axis, a clear relationship between x and y appears. And, that, and you'll also see it's a stronger positive relationship as opposed to before where it was appearing to be a negative relationship within the box. You can kind of seen here, the relationship here, not negative, excuse me, no, no relationship. All right, that's the end of this lecture.